go on the ocean floor. But now Canadian researchers are warning the famous ship might be soon lost forever. The reason is because of a new bacteria. Researchers from Dalhousie University say these rusticles are actually eating away at the Titanic and the remains of the ship could be gone in 20 years or even less than that. Alan Ruffman is a prominent Titanic researcher and the author of Titanic Remembered the Unsinkable Ship and Halifax. Right now, Alan is with, with us live from Halifax. Tell us, uh, Alan, about these rusticles and what they're doing to this ship. It's disappearing so quickly. Well, I'm one of those people, Marcy, and that I'm not nearly as worried as maybe those researchers are. That wreck has been a pile of iron on the ocean floor for almost 100 years, and I'm willing to bet if you and I were to live to be another 100 years old, it would still be there in many, many uh, shapes of the same. The bacteria were, what, what was really interesting about the Titanic is they could go down, not with divers, but rather with submersibles, pick off the, uh, the so-called rusticles and examine them. And that's some of the work that Dalhousie and others have done, is looking at the nature of the bacteria. And so these bacteria had really never been looked at before um, because we couldn't get at wrecks that were in that very deep water. So these are bacteria that thrive on things like steel and they will surely reduce the wreck eventually to nothing. But I'm not too worried about that. Virtually every wreck that goes into the ocean is reduced to nothing over a period of 50 to 60 years because of wave action or borers chewing away at the wood. You've actually been to the side of the wreckage before. You were there when the first group of tourists uh, went out to see it. What was it like to actually see the ship's remains? Well, I was not. I was the color commentator that rode the ship, uh, the Russian research vessel, up above. So there was one empty seat on the last dive, but I'm afraid one of the Russian biologists got into that. So I've never been down to the wreck. I have uh, experienced it as many, many other people have in the virtual world through really wonderful videotapes and, of course, films that uh, Cameron made like that. And that's the way I think most people in the world will ever see the Titanic is through those sorts of uh, virtual means. It's been nearly 100 years uh, since the ship went down. Why do you think we're still so fascinated uh, with the Titanic and everything about it? Well, initially it was because so many wealthy Americans and wealthy British people died on the Titanic. The Titanic didn't really distinguish between your uh, social class when you came to getting in the cold water and drowning. Mind you, a good number of the first class people, if they were women and children, got off quite safely. But the Titanic cut right across society. It, uh, it killed many, many people, and that, that, that loss... Has, you may even, depending on where you grew up, you may even have sung the nursery rhymes uh, around campfires about the great ship, uh, oh, the great ship went down. But now we have these wonderful videotapes to look at. We have Cameron's film. We have, I'm part of the problem, I, I wrote a book about Halifax. In effect, a lot more information about all sorts of passengers, not just the wealthy, but right down to the fellow called Jay Dawson, Jack Dawson, uh, in the film, but Jay Dawson in real life, in effect, uh, who worked on the Titanic, who were either emigrating to America, trying to get their family off to a better life. Those stories still resonate with many, many people. And we're coming up to 2012, which will be the 100th commemoration. And I think you're only going to see the hype continue to grow. Great to talk to you, Alan. Thanks so much for coming on. Thank you very much. Keep your eyes open for more Titanic stories, though. Will do. <laughs>